Good evening. I'm Charlotte Ann Lucas with Nowcast SA, and welcome to the City of San Antonio's first budget open house. We're trying something different this year. Some of you may recall this is the third year that we've webcast these, but we're doing something different this year. Jeff, tell us about it. Sure, I'm Jeff Coyle with the City of San Antonio. This is, uh, as Charlotte mentioned, a budget open house, meaning it's an open house format. It's sort of casual. You come and go as you want to ask questions about our city budget. Uh, the city budget's the most important decision the city council makes every year. It defines what the priorities of the city are. And if you look around, you'll see that there are, there are tables here for various departments, parks, libraries, police, animal care. Uh, residents are being invited to come up and ask questions. And um, we are uh, going to turn here in a second and introduce Councilman Mike Gallagher and, and uh, Councilman Alan Warwick, who are hosting this meeting tonight. And when we come back, we'll be answering questions from people at home. If you're watching us, you've already figured out it's a virtual open house through your computer. So we'll be answering questions about the budget. And, uh, and in, let's turn now to the council members. Okay. Everybody turned out for it. There's a lot to talk about tonight. It's just absolutely amazing. The main thing I would really know the answer. For example, if you've got a 311 question, guess where you need to go? How many people in this room have dialed 311? <laughs> there you go. So, we know you got a good, solid job. Really. Um, that's the kind of thing that, that I think is so important in why this really works so well. Oh, I got to remember to talk to the mind. So thank you so much. to hold this other one. This is so the people that have their computers on and the interweb and all that kind of stuff, they'll get to hear what, all the brilliant things we have to say as well. Again, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do and what this format is tonight is really not so much this meeting that we're doing right now where we're sitting here in these chairs, but it's the idea that you actually can go and talk to a city representative on which things that you find most important. A real good example, like for me, is I think as somebody who's worked in the neighborhood a long time, I want to make Still here. The safe officer is safe. So really uh, say you're really concerned about whether EMS responds in your neighborhood the way you want it to. Some of us have more trouble than others, you know, just depending on the age of the people in the neighborhood, that kind of thing. So where would you go to ask questions about EMS? and fire response, there you go. So that gives you the idea. And there's a whole lot of different reps here that we'll be able to have you talk to. It gives me pleasure now to introduce Councilman Alan Warwick from District 2 who's here. We're glad you're here. Alan, I'm glad you could be a part of this. Thank you, Mike, and thank you all for coming out and showing your support for the budget process. It's, it's not just about the budget items that you want. It's about the process and bringing things out to the community so that we can all um, be a part of this and all give the feedback that we are looking for in order to uh, make this a better city and not just a better District 10 or a better District 2, but all the districts are going to benefit from this budget process and benefit from the added activity online and in person. So again, I'm not going to steal the show. This is my show. I'm just here to support any of my Northeast residents. Can, can I see the Northeast District 2 residents? Can you raise your hand, folks? Yeah. We got a couple. We got a couple of folks. Well, if you, if you, please, come, please come and introduce yourselves to me if I haven't met you already, because I'd love to meet you and I'd love to learn more about uh, the issues and, and what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, thank you again for all your support, and uh, thank you, Mike, for allowing me to come share this event with you. Now it's an honor to introduce somebody who I really have admired ever since uh, she came to San Antonio and has really done a very good job of 
leading this city and making sure, if nothing else, we spend our money right. And if you don't believe we've done that, guess what's the only big city of our size or larger that has a triple A bond rating? And so I'm really honored uh, to introduce our city manager, Cheryl Scully. Let's give her a hand. We've got lots of technology tonight, don't we? Good evening. Thanks for being here. This is a big crowd, and we're very excited that you're all here. So we have a different format than we had in previous years. We try to change it up so you don't get bored with our budget presentations. And tonight is an open house format because sometimes you all want to talk about a specific issue, but you may not necessarily want to hear about six or seven other items that are being discussed. You want to focus on street maintenance or you want to talk about the libraries or in Sally's case, animal control. And so uh, we have a number of city staff here tonight and I'm going to introduce some of them so that you can see around the room who is here because we have quite a few people. So starting in the back, Parks and Recreation, I'd like for you guys to wave so they can see where you are. Parks and Recreation are here and we have Nikki Ramos and Dale McNeil, our assistant directors. Uh, are back there. Uh, well, actually, Dale is with uh, the library, so we kind of do a parks and libraries uh, at the same time, but they're back there in that corner. So if you have an issue or a question, we invite you to go to the back. And Charlotte, tell me to back up if there's too much feedback here. We've got lots of microphones going on. Uh, Human Services is next. Melody Woosley, our director, is there. Melody, thank you for being here. And Human Services takes care of all of the social services programs. And uh, they're here and can talk with you about our Haven for Hope homeless campus or any of the social services that they manage um, for the city. Okay, next we have our fire department, and we're glad uh, that our deputy and assistant chief are here, Carl Wiedich is here. And um, we also have uh, Chris is here with Monastir. So thank you both for being here tonight. Okay, next is 311, and Councilman Gallagher already mentioned that. Um, and Laura Davis is here, our call center manager. And they receive how many calls a year? Nine hundred thousand calls a year. So Laura has a big job because she manages those to make sure that we're responsive as well. We have performance metrics for each of our departments that they need to respond to those calls that come in within so many hours and we hold our department heads accountable. So if you have an issue or a question, let's talk with Laura tonight and she can help you out. Okay, Animal Care Services also here tonight and Vincent Medley is here our assistant director code enforcement John Jacks is here assistant director of our development services department uh, David McCary is here director of solid waste and we have our program a number of staff for solid waste uh, we're moving forward with our program our variable rate pricing so if you don't have very much trash and you would like a smaller can uh, because you don't you don't fill up your can each week uh, you can do that at a reduced rate and if you talk with David he can explain that a little bit more for you um, our police chief is here tonight Anthony Trevino and let's give all of our Please just ask one of the budget staff. And then transportation and capital improvements. Rosie Vecini is here tonight, the assistant director. And with SA Tomorrow, where's our SA Tomorrow crew? In the back, 
Trish Wallace and Rudy Nino are here from planning, uh, our planning manager from TCI, and also Rudy is the planning administrator, planning and community development. And they are working on our comprehensive development plan update, as well as the transportation plan and the sustainability plan, and coordinating all of the public engagement aspects of that. So SA Tomorrow is that effort, and they've been doing a number of meetings in the community. How many of you have attended one for a comprehensive plan? Okay, we need to have more people attending those meetings to help us. It's about the growth and development of the community and what do we want as residents for San Antonio? How do we want the city to grow? Um, or perhaps not grow quite as fast as it is. So a whole discussion about that throughout the community. So we thank them for being here tonight. We also have a number of executive staff. Eric Walsh, Eric Wade, he's deputy city manager in the back of the room. Jeff Coyle, our director of communications for the city is here. Uh, Peter Zanoni, deputy city manager to my right. Uh, who, I know we have a number of other staff. Who's back here? Di Galvan, where's Di? Next. There's Di <laughs> She's back there by Jeff Coyle. We have a number of other city staff here tonight, so we're glad you're here and we're all willing in to answer your questions. Now just a couple of things about the budget to highlight for you. So we have this open format. Please, if you're interested in streets construction, because this budget at the direction of the mayor and city council includes more funding for street maintenance. increases our street maintenance budget so that we have 64 million dollars that is compared to only 41 million this year for street maintenance up to 64 million we've heard that from you loud and clear that you want to see better and more street maintenance also sidewalk improvements the budget increases the sidewalk budget by 10 million dollars so that this year the budget has 5 million for sidewalks next year a total of 15 million dollars and also $12 million of additional funding for drainage improvements. We have seen what happened this spring with all the extra rain that we received and many of our neighborhoods had been flooded and so we have extra additional funding proposed in the budget so that we can address some of those drainage needs. Uh, the overall budget is balanced. We're required by law, as you know, to maintain a balanced budget. It's balanced today. It's balanced as proposed, and the council will adopt a balanced budget. And so it also includes a reduction in the city's property tax rate. So we have recommended a reduction of three quarters of a cent on the city's property tax rate, and that represents about six million dollars that we will forego uh, in revenue uh, in this year's budget. Now, we all know that in our tax bill, property tax bill, about half of that goes to the public schools. About a quarter of our total property tax bill goes to the county, the community colleges, the river authority, and the university county hospital system. And about 22% comes to the city of San Antonio. So we are a small piece of the total property tax revenue of the bills we all pay as property owners. Uh, but nonetheless, the city council directed us to take a look at could we give some relief because the appraiser, the county appraiser, has increased values this year. And so the council asked that we consider that in the budget proposal and try to help, especially our seniors. And you know that we also have a homestead exemption uh, for our seniors as well. Nonetheless, uh, we are proposing a rate decrease. Now, in the past uh, 10 years, we have lowered the city's property tax rate four times. Now, you may not think or realize that we have done that, but mayor and city council members have been very conscientious about trying to address, especially those on fixed incomes, what can we do uh, to help in that effort? So this budget does do that. Uh, the budget also, uh, keeps our public safety spending at just under 66%. Some of you know that we've been working at that for the past several years, trying to manage our costs and the escalation of public safety expense, which has grown dramatically over the past decade. 
specifically in terms of health care costs. In fact, those budgets have grown faster than our general fund revenue. And because we're required to maintain a balanced budget, what that's forced us to do is make reductions in other areas of the budget. Street maintenance, parks and recreation, libraries, code enforcement, animal care services, the general administration of the city. All of those things that impact the quality of life in San Antonio, and yet because we're required to maintain a balanced budget, it has to come from somewhere. Uh, so what we are attempting to do is manage those costs better, and the mayor and council unanimously ask us to keep that spending without reducing positions. How do we keep that spending within 66% of our general fund budget? So we're doing that. So those are the major components of the budget. Our total city budget is $2.5 billion, and that includes all funds, our general fund that supports police and fire, our restricted funds, those funds that are managed by the revenue generated. So solid waste, for example, is not supported by property taxes, but rather supported by the fees we pay as ratepayers uh, into the system. Same with the aviation department. The airport is supported by the fees that the airlines pay for operating at the airport, from the users, from the retail, retailers there at the airport. And then our capital budget, that which we have approved as voters in our general obligation bonds, the 2007 bond program, the 2012 voter approved bond program, those capital projects uh, that the voters have approved, as well as our capital construction for the convention center that's supported by the hotel tax, not by the local residents, but rather those that come and stay in San Antonio and, and pay a tax to stay in the hotels, and also the capital construction at the airport that is supported by that fund. So we're a big operation, 2.5 billion. We have uh, 12,000 city employees, 4,000 uniforms, fire and police, and 8,000 civilian employees. Um, and it's a big operation. It's a complicated one too that's very diverse because we provide so many different kinds of services that I've just mentioned. Nonetheless, the budget is balanced and we invite you to speak up. We want you to tell us what you think should be in our city budget and we invite you to go to the tables to ask questions of the staff who are here and to offer your suggestions as to what we should increase or decrease. And then before you leave tonight, we would like for you to give us your feedback on this process. As I said, we're trying something a little bit different this year uh, so that we can specialize and allow you the opportunity to get more information on those things that are most important to you. So on behalf of the city staff who are here tonight and our city organization, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for being involved in the community and for speaking up on our city budget. Let's give her a In. For those of you who are a little bit confused about how much of the property tax actually goes to the city and that sort of thing, which, you know, 22 cents, I was hoping for the whole thing, but we're not going to get it. There's some pie charts back there that talk about where the money goes that's really worth looking at and learning about. I think it's very important that we send a message right now to Cheryl and to all of the city leaders in the room here that who they've spoken to tonight. This is a very different audience than they're gonna find at a lot of the other budget meetings. But most of the people, the vast majority of the people that are sitting in this room, Cheryl, are neighborhood leaders. They, a lot of them hold the offices right now or they've held offices in the neighborhood. And that throws the responsibility now back on you that what you learned this evening, I want you to get that out to the residents of your neighborhood. Promise me you'll do that, okay? I sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for turning out. And like I say, get to these tables and ask those tough questions. Ask code enforcement. How can we help that out across the street from my house? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that was a really good intro from from all of all of these folks from Councilman. 
uh, Gallagher, from Councilman Warwick, and from the city manager. Um, we also have um, another video. Sure, we do. It's uh, it's our uh, it's our uh, budget introduction video. It's about three and a half minutes long. Sort of gives an overview of what the budget's about. So uh, we're going to run that in a second. When we come back, we've been gathering questions from people at home, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll pull some folks aside and, and answer some of those questions and allow you to participate uh, from home as well, even if you're not here. So, uh, but why don't we toss to the video and we'll come okay. back in a second. Okay. Hello, I'm City Manager Cheryl Scully. The fiscal year 2016 proposed budget is $2.5 billion and reflects policy direction from the Mayor and City Council and valuable input from residents on the community's priorities. The proposed budget reduces the city's property tax rate, increases our investment in streets, sidewalks, and drainage, and maintains the public safety budget within 66% of the general fund. Over the next few weeks, with valuable input from the community, the City Council will carefully consider the proposed budget before its adoption on September 10th. We appreciate your interest in the fiscal year 2016 budget and for your shared commitment to making San Antonio a diverse, dynamic, and healthy community for you and your family. Speak we asked you to speak San up San Antonio, speak and up. you did. Yeah. In meetups and online, you told us what was important to you. I love that I don't have to wait forever at a stoplight. I really appreciate the Baronet Chapel Library Service because it meets my direct needs. Truly both code enforcement and code compliance. I love knowing that the plants and the trees that we plant are going to be around for generations to come. The City of San Antonio's fiscal year 2016 proposed budget reflects a community that prioritizes lower property tax rates, better streets and sidewalks, and an affordable balance between public safety and other priorities, such as parks, libraries, animal care, and human services. The proposed budget makes a big investment in your streets. As our population continues to grow, we will have to be able to move a larger population from point A to point B. 23 million is added for street maintenance, increasing the street's budget from 41 million to 64 million. 10 million more is added for sidewalk improvements. An additional 12 million is proposed in new drainage improvements to reduce flooding across San Antonio. The proposed budget includes funding for the operation of two new senior centers, two new libraries, and a new spay and neuter surgery clinic to help reduce the number of stray animals in the city and increase adoption. Animal care services helps pets find homes. Funding for the maintenance and security of new greenways and parks completed through the 2012 bond program is also included. We see kids and adults out playing together all the time. All of this is proposed while also reducing the city's property tax rate, saving taxpayers 6.1 million next year. By far, the biggest portion of the general fund budget is public safety. The proposed budget keeps public safety spending below 66% of the general fund. Funds are added for new body cameras, updated technology, and equipment for police officers and firefighters. And several dozen new firefighters and police officers will be hired to serve the area formerly known as City South. Before the budget goes to the City Council for approval on September 10th, we want to hear from you. Please join us for one of our five open house nights and let us know what you think. And for the first time, if you can't actually make it to the open house, you can stop in virtually through your computer or smartphone. Visit www.saspeakup.com or join the social conversation with hashtag SASpeakup. San Antonio. Thank you for speaking up. Not everybody can be here, and not everybody can be here even online. And so what we've been doing is, across social media, collecting questions for various city departments and for the city about, about the budget. And um, Jeff? Yes. And Charlotte Ann, we're grateful that Nowcast SA is doing this for us so that people at home can, can join in our open house and ask questions. And we would encourage people at home to ask more of them because we've got four more of these uh, over the course of the next week and a half. 
So I'm going to uh, bring Nikki Ramos in, who's our assistant director of the uh, Parks and Recreation Department. Nikki, the question we got was from a resident named Mark Turpak, who asked via Twitter, how does this year's budget help complete the remaining 32 miles of the Howard Peak Greenway Trail? What can citizens expect from the Greenway program in FY16? So um, over a million dollars was allocated to provide um, operations, maintenance, security. So when the trails open, which we have another 19 miles that should open up this year um, with more to come every year after, um, we'll be adding park police into the system for um, trail security, trail monitoring. We'll be adding folks to go out there, make sure the vegetation is cleared, make it easy to use, um, enjoyable for people to use, and then additional um, pro uh, project and program management as we continue to plan for new miles of trail. We just got approved another $80 million to continue to build out. So we will be building for quite some time. So this year's budget will uh, address the miles that will be completed this year, and it will be anywhere from maintenance to safety. So it's the sales tax that builds it, and it's the city's annual budget then that operates it. Correct. So as you add more miles, you need to add more equipment and staff and everything else. Absolutely, to absolutely. So we really focus on timing when the um, new miles will come online so that we make sure that we're ready to go. So as soon as they're ready, we're ready to take care Excellent. of it. Nikki, thank you very much. Absolutely. Appreciate it. What do you think about that, Charlotte Ann? Well, I think that's, that's really good to understand exactly where the funding comes from for various parts of the park and that not all of the park is being paid for out of our, out of our property tax dollars, which is an, an important thing to know. So. Well, and I see over your shoulder another gentleman I want to bring in. This is Vincent Medley from the Animal Care Services Department. Vincent, we got a question uh, from someone at home about uh, roaming animals, um, okay. which is a problem, obviously, in, in lots of communities. Okay. What is the number one thing that a resident can do to try to address or help resolve that problem? So, we, you know, our slogan is leash, not loose. So, number one, buy a dog leash for your animal so that... You Number one, that does a number of powerful things. It gives the animal the indication that every day it's going to be exercised, but it also gives you some a, a means of interacting with with the with with your animal, and and that's one of the reasons why animals run loose uh, quite a bit. Dogs is that lack of exercise, that lack of activity, um, and so we recommend you exercise your animal and also take them to the dog park. We have plenty of beautiful dog parks in the city. Um, those things I think will will you know, go a long way towards um, making sure that your animal stays on your property and that when it's on the property, if it's been exercised, that it, um, it, it knows that it'll get that exercise every day. If I'm going I'm to take the liberty to add on to our viewer's question, there's also a, a big investment in this year's budget yes. in your department. Talk about what's new in animal care uh, in the FY16 budget. So for the FY16 budget, one of the, the, um, one of the great things that we, new programs that we have is the education team. That team is going to be responsible for providing information to the public from anything to what you just asked about. Um, how, do, how do I uh, better interact with my animal? How do I keep them on my property? What are the laws concerning my animals? But the greatest thing they're going to do is make sure that the community understands and knows the services that the city supports and funds for the um, average pet owner in the city of San Antonio. I think we want to hear from some, from some people here. Um, why don't I hand you the mic? I'm going to go find some residents that we can ask about their priorities, and we'll, okay. I'll come back. Okay. All righty. So um, we have some video now of, um, and I think we're going to go to uh, one resident's video, and um, she's talking about why she loves to learn at the San Antonio Public Library. I really appreciate the Baronet Sapo Library Service because it meets my direct needs. Um, I need to use the internet a lot uh, to learn how to make a resume and how to do applications for jobs and stuff. So they really help me with that. Uh, I love it because I know that there are people here that can help me if I get stuck with something. Um, I know that they will be here when I have a question on anything and I can see that they're making a difference in people's lives.
Okay. Okay, so we're back again, and I'm standing here with Roger Martinez. And Roger, tell me, um, you are with the Homeowners Association? I'm the, yes, I'm the president of Northern Hills Homeowners Association. I'm also the vice president of El Chaparral uh, Fertile Valley Homeowners Association. Oh my, you have civic engagement to the max here. <laughs> well, I, I try to do my civic duty if I can. Absolutely. So tell me, um, I, I suspect that you've been to um, previous budget sessions in the past. Yes, this is a unique concept they're utilizing this time. I think it's, this is a good format because it gives us the opportunity to speak to the various departments to, to get an idea of what their plans are for the future and how we can implement them into our scheme of plans. So. And, and also giving you one more opportunity to speak directly with the folks in d various departments. Oh yes, yes, get to know them so they get to know us because we like to bring them into our association periodically to understand that the services are available and how they can utilize the services better. Okay, okay. So, so what are some of the messages that you're bringing about the city budget from the, the homeowners associations that you're affiliated with? Well, uh, the. Uh, our big concern as, as a community is the infrastructure. We're very much concerned that the uh, stability of, of uh, the roads is kept up. We have issues with potholes. A lot of the main thoroughfares are well worn and they're doing significant damage and causing accidents. And we want a lot of that to be dealt with. We also are concerned with the police department. They have the SAFE program that we've been utilizing quite successfully for the past 10 years. It's helped us reduce crime in our neighborhood substantially. We'd like to see that to continue. Uh, we've also got other areas in, in, uh, in terms of um, the police department and make sure that they take, uh, keep the, the SAFE office officer program going because I know it's going to be a stretch as the city grows to try to utilize the officers that we have now. It's a very difficult task. Which is, which, is a, which is a big deal. I mean, as we're being told over and over again, by the year 2040, we will have more than a million new residents of San Antonio, and that's going to mean trying to figure out how to spread services across all of those people as well. True, and, and we, as a community, we have, we have to think about the youth. Uh, we're also concerned about the, the sidewalk situation. There's a number of, of major thoroughfares in, in San Antonio don't even have sidewalks, and these children are walking to school and their safety is a big concern. Well, and I think we saw from the beginning of the As They Speak Up um, campaign, when people were asked what they were very, very concerned about, they said that their number one public safety issue was sidewalks, streets, and drainage. And they were talking about that in terms of, of, of uh, young people and not so young people. And what we heard from the city manager tonight was that the budget changed to reflect those concerns. Well, that's true. That's true. And and uh, it, there's so many areas of importance to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't even bring up code enforcement. There, uh, one of the reasons why our neighborhood has been able to uphold its value is because we try to maintain the standards of, of maintained homes. And the, the quality of life is, is also, all these various policing agencies do a great deal of, of good for our neighborhood. And we want to encourage more participation in the city to keep these programs going uh, because we, if it's, it wasn't for our safety, we'd have very little to, to work with. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Well, thank you very really much. I really appreciate it, Roger. Thank you. All right, Charlotte Ann, thank you. I've got another question from uh, one of our folks at home participating in our virtual open house. It has to do with the Lone Star Rail District, which is that train that would connect San Antonio to Austin. Uh, I'm going to pull in our point person from the city on that project. This is Peter Zanoni. He's our deputy city manager. And uh, Peter, we had a question about the Lone Star Rail project, which we know you're working on. The question was from uh, Mark on Twitter, and he asks, are we planning for parallel hike and bike trails to help with transportation, recreation, and safety uh, if that train system gets developed? Okay. The answer is uh, yes, we will try to do that as much as we can. Uh, there's two things that we're keeping in mind though. One is safety and two is availability of land. And so it's not the city that's actually constructing the Lone Star Rail System. It's an independent district, if you will. And I spoke with them today and uh, they're train operator, the lead uh, operator for the system, who has 30 years experience in the train business, uh, quickly told me that those are two points they will have to consider 
a safety, you want to have a bike trail or walking trail that's not right up against the track. Sometimes there's a barrier that separates the two. Uh, and then accessibility of land. And so that issue, the accessibility of land may be a little bit of a challenge uh, because the Lone Star Rail that will go from San Antonio to Austin will go on an existing track, which is used today to carry freight for Union Pacific. And so having right of way available to buy or to lease for a hike and bike trail may be a little bit of a challenge, but uh, it's something they're willing to consider looking into. And then as the, uh, as the writer suggests, it'd be a great idea and so we at the city who will help influence what Lone Star Rail does, uh, we'll add that to our things that we'll work on with them. Excellent. Yes, Peter, thank you very okay. much. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Okay. So um, I'm going to hand it back to Charlotte Ann, who's uh, rustled up another guest for us here. Okay. Okay. Um, actually, I think we're going to go to a video right now. Um, and that would be a video from an employee um, uh, from America Medina talking about what she loves about her job with Clean and Green Division of San Antonio. I provide clean, beautiful parks for the city of San Antonio. I love providing the service because I'm able to see the public enjoy the parks, uh, watching them play with their kids, have barbecues, enjoy the parties. It's just great to know that they're out there and enjoying the parks. If you love this service or any other service, please let us know. We love to hear your voice. This is your chance, San Antonio. Speak up. All right, so we're back here at our virtual open house on the uh, city's FY16 budget. I'm joined by Melody Woolsley, who is our director of human services. Uh, and we got a question for you, Melody, from okay. someone uh, through their computer. The question is, how much funding is uh, provided to support human development services provided by nonprofit agencies? And how could a nonprofit be considered for funding? And so the City of San Antonio provides almost $21 million every year in general fund and grant funding to nonprofit agencies to provide human services in the area of education, family well-being, safety net services, and workforce development services. These include um, homeless programs, parenting programs, after school programs, and job training programs. And these are groups outside of the city, essentially, that, that do, that do uh, the work in, in the community and the city selects and funds them, correct? That's correct. Groups like the YMCA, the YWCA, Boys and Girls Club, those types of nonprofits. So for those who work at one of those nonprofits or lead one of those nonprofits, how do they get considered for city funding in the future? We uh, initiate, implement a RFP process every other year biannually. So we, the last one that we did was in for 2014 and 2015, and so the next one that we issue will be in February of 2016. And so applicants respond to that process. They provide us with a description of the program they want to provide, a budget, uh, what kind of outcomes they're, they're going to provide to the city and to the community, and then we evaluate those proposals and make recommendations, and then city council approves them as part of the budget every year. Excellent. Melody, thank you very much. Thank for everything you're, you're doing for the city. Okay, so I see another gentleman over here who's pretty hard to miss. This is David McCrary. He's Thanks our solid waste you. director. Good, good, David. So um, people are interested in the organics program. We had somebody ask a question about that, about um, an update on the organics. Can you give us a, an overview of how sure. it's working and, sure. and what you can put in it and so on and so forth? Well, right now, the organics program is a subscription program. Today, we have 20,000 customers on that program. We will no longer have a subscription program effective October of 2016, 2015 this year. So it'll be for the FY 2016 budget. But the good news is, over the next 18 months, beginning in October, we will deliver organics cards citywide and offer it to all residents so that they can trim not only do their grass, grass clippings, yard waste, that sort of thing, even all their organic materials, they'll be able to recycle that and give it back to nature, which will allow us to compost it, and it's at a cheaper rate. We actually save over $6 per ton just to go from the brown cart 
to the green card. It's that amazing. So residents will get a chance to get a packet. It'll be a nice welcome packet, and it'll give them all the instructions, but it'll take 18 months. So we're talking about from October of 2015 all the way through March of 2017. We'll do the whole city, no additional cost. Okay, and I uh, this, this question didn't come from our friends online right now, but another okay. big thing in the budget is the pay as you throw sure. program uh, in solid waste. Explain what that means, what it means to uh, the average resident. Pay as you throw is simply looking at your utilities. It's like your light bill or even your water bill. The more you use, the more you pay, the less you use, the less you pay. It's not like that in garbage collection, no, it's is not it? like that in garbage. So the one size fit all will no longer apply there. What will happen is residents will be given a choice of a large, medium, and small brown cart. The smallest cart, which is a 48-gallon, they'll actually see a 50-cent reduction on their current bill, which is $20.93. So that'll be taken down to $20.43. The medium-sized cart is like a 64-gallon cart. Again, the more you recycle, you can reduce what you throw away in the brown cart because some will still have that 96-gallon cart. Medium-sized cart would be $20.93, keep the same rate. But those that maintain the larger cart against, like a utility, they're going to pay $1.25 more, and it'll take them up to $22.18. They'll have twice as much capacity, but you know some might look at all three carts and say, wow, this is great, I've got more volume, whereas others may see it, no, that's a little too much for me. So they'll reduce, as long as you're recycling in the blue or the green cart, then you've got an advantage uh, and it can accommodate them to get a smaller cart because then you'll be doing yourself injustice. And an opportunity to save money while you're Absolutely, doing it. Absolutely, especially That's that. Great. David, very, thank you very much. Thank very you, exciting sir. stuff and we appreciate, appreciate you uh, joining all of our friends at home who are watching on their computers I and their smartphones. I appreciate them coming around to, to visit with us. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, David. Thank you. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up here, Charlotte Ann. Yeah, okay. Let me just say before I turn it over to our, our host here with Nowcast SA that this is the first of four of these open houses we're going to have. Uh, we would encourage you to come out and join us in person for one of one of the ones this week or next week. Uh, and if you can't, feel free to send us questions through the website and we'll uh, make every effort to answer them online. So either way, we want to give you a chance to uh, speak up and have your voice be heard. And we thank you for doing all this. I'm going to let you have the last word and, uh, and say goodnight to our viewers here. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and and that's, that's it for tonight. We're about to go um, shut down for this evening. But I've, it's very important that you know that when you send in your questions online, when you send in your questions, if you come here in person, there is somebody who is sincerely listening to what you have to say. And that's it for Nowcast SA.